to stop the mailbox server called exe-hnu1 and place it into the stop list, we run the following command. And it's very important to run it with the configuration only parameter. Meaning that it would not try to directly connect to the exchnu1 server and receive errors because exchnu1 is offline. So we're just doing a configuration change here to mark the server as being stopped. And this error that you see here, I believe, is related to Active Directory not being able to replicate information to the other Active Directory site because it is offline. So we do the same for the second server in the list and we would like to add the server called exchnu2 to the stopped list. Remember that the purpose of a stop list is so that when we are restoring services, when you are restoring the database availability group to the standby site, the process will know which servers need to be brought online and which servers need to be included into the database availability group. Those that are in the stop list will not be brought back online into the DAG, but instead will be evicted from the DAG. Now that the servers have been stopped, we next, we next need to verify that the cluster service is stopped on all nodes in the standby site. You can do this by typing the command net stop followed by the name of the cluster service or you can manually stop the service from the GUI. Now that all the cluster services are stopped, we can run the restore database availability group command followed by the name of the standby active directory site, which in my case is site B. Press enter, followed by the name of the DAG, and then we observe what happens. The quorum is first formed and the nodes that have been marked as stopped will be evicted first starting with exchnu1 which, which is being evicted and then a second server exchnu2 will be evicted and once those nodes are evicted we will end up not with a four member DAG group but we would, enter, we would end up with a two node database availability group so in essence the DAG group will be shrink down to size to just the existing two nodes or the existing number of nodes that you have in your standby site. And we see here that it is switching to use the alternate file share on DC2 rather than server. Remember that server hosted the the computer called server hosted the primary witness server. Now let's take a look at our database availability group. And we notice that we have two sections here, the stopped mailbox servers and started mailbox servers. Stopped, the servers have been marked as stopped, exhnu2 and exhnu1. Then we take a look at operational servers now, exhnu3 and 6, which are in site B, or the standby site. Now let's take a look at our failover cluster. Notice that the G, the DAG, now contains just two nodes and it's now using the file witness share on DC2 which is the alternate file witness server and we only have now two nodes in this cluster ideally what you would like to see here is not forced quorum but node and file share majority if you see if you follow this process and you see a forced quorum configuration then that is a risky because if you restart your server you will lose quorum but in this case we have a database availability group that is still resilient to the failure of one node and it still can use the alternate file share witness 
Now let's simulate recovery of the primary data center site by reconnecting the network interfaces that we had disconnected previously to all the mailbox servers in the primary site EXCHNU1 and 2 together with the file witness share server called server to start these mailbox servers back into the database availability group we run the start database availability group command followed by the name of the server before you run this command ensure that the cluster service has started on your mailbox server and then we run the same for the second server notice that the nodes have been added and now we have four nodes in our cluster and it has moved from a two node cluster to a four node cluster as we had originally. The only difference is that our file share is using the server called DC2 whereas it should be using the server called server which was our original file witness share. To, to get back our original configuration simply run the set database availability group command and this would point it back to the original file witness share so if I refresh here we see that it reverts back to the original file witness server so now our DAG is back as it was so you've seen in this tutorial the data, the data center switchover and then the data center restore